Hey everybody, this is Rich Brooks of Flight New Media, and I'm here with our creative director, Ryan Goen. And Ryan actually designed the flight logo years and years ago, which is great because actually today that's what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk logos. Yeah. So why, why is a logo important to a company? A logo is important to a company because it's, in my opinion, the cornerstone of, of their communication. It's on everything that a company does. It not only distinguishes the company from all other companies, it also really holds all the equity of the brand. Sure. The trust, the goodwill, and things like that that a company builds up over time. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and of course, that can be used not just on uh, the website, but on business cards and, and all other types of applications, right? That, that's right. I mean, logos can be used, obviously, from the uh, signage, vehicle signage, retail signage, websites, newspaper ads, every, everything. It really should be, be able to work across all mediums. I'm thinking that we need a flight truck and perhaps a flight airplane that this would go on the tail of. We, let's start with uniforms. Uh, uniform sounds yeah. like a good plan. Yeah. Uh, I'm thinking mm -hmm. something along the lines of the good humor man that we would all wear around the office with the uh, flight like logo that. on it. I Excellent. don't have to worry about what I wear every day. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. Um, so obviously there are strong logos and uh, perhaps not so strong logos. So what makes right. for a good logo if a company's looking to create one? Sure. There's a handful of things that that make a really good logo. And before I start designing any logo, I try to keep these things in mind. Mm -hmm. Any good logo should be simple. Okay. It should be versatile. It should be unique and it should be enduring. I can kind of go back through each of yeah. those and explain a little bit more. Uh, a good logo should be simple. Let, let, for instance, let's take the Nike logo, for example. Simple swoosh, that's right. all it is. Instantly recognizable. Very simple and unique. It's all it is. It's, it's almost perfect. And it only cost them thirty-five dollars. You know, as the story goes. That's right. Right. It's and know. they didn't even like it. That, yeah, that doesn't so, happen every day, but it's no. a great example. Right. So not only should a good logo be simple, it should be a good logo should be versatile. And what I mean by that is that it should be applicable to all a variety of different mediums, from a small black and white newspaper ad mm -hmm. to signage on the side of a building. It, a good logo should be able to work small, should be able to work large, in black and white, and in color. Also, a good logo should be unique. Something about it, you know, obviously keeping it simple, but also it has to have something unique about it. For instance, the flight logo. You, know, the, you don't see the, the plane on a lot of different logos. No, not well. Now you do, because we saw a lot of people have copied Ryan's designs. But it's kind of like when you first came up with the flight logo and it had the two golden arches. And I'm like, I don't know. I kind of think I've yeah, seen this one before. I, yeah. This was take two. <laughs> right. Right. Well, for instance, take take the Starbucks logo, for right. instance. A, a very recognizable logo. It has a, it's a very simple logo, but but they use color, shape, and some, some imagery to make give it something unique right. that sets it apart and makes it stand out. You know, it, it, it's a beautiful logo and it's not too complex. Um, one one of the last items that makes a, for a good logo is for it to be enduring. Uh, we want a logo to stand the test of time, if you will. We don't want to be changing our logo every couple of years. For instance, like the IBM logo has worked since the 40s. Right. It hasn't been changed. The color hasn't been changed. The makeup of it hasn't been changed, and it still works. It, when they des when Paul Rand designed that logo back in the 40s or 50s, he wasn't subscribing to any trends or fads. It was just something that, that's worked back then and it works today. Like it's, a classic it's, tuxedo. It's, that's right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Awesome. So those are the things to keep in mind just before you put pencil to paper and, and start designing a logo. Great. Um, and if you do that, at the end, you'll, you'll have a, a good, strong logo. And I think that's important because a lot of people take a look at a logo and they're like, you're right, that's easy to do. I can do that. It's very simple. And what they don't that's realize right. is a very good, simple logo is is the overlay of a very complex process. Exactly. Exactly. We, we, get, we talk to a lot of people that say, you know, I had my son design my logo. And well, you look at the logo and it looks like right. your son designed the logo. So it is a lot of people kind of take the logo for granted. Because logos are everywhere, we're bombarded with them every day. But it, it's such a simple thing. But it, underneath it all, it's it's quite complex to get something at the end of the process that's simple, beautiful, and enduring. Excellent. All right, Ryan. Thanks a lot. And you're welcome. Uh, hopefully that was a lot of good information on how to build a, a great logo. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us on our website at www.flight.biz, and we'll be talking more with Ryan later. Thanks. Thanks, Rich.